release this interview, Pizza in New Haven with Colin M. Kaplan. I love this book. <laughs> Who wouldn't if you're from New Haven? If you're right? hungry for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, you said it took you seven years to yeah. write this book. Yeah. It comes out early December. Yep. So we have you before the books hit the shelf, which I love. Why did you write about pizza? I wrote about pizza because it's the most passionate thing I could ever I could ever eat, think about, dream about. You know, it's amazing. Pizza is part of my life. So well, it's, I think it's part of everybody's life who, who comes to Connecticut and ends up in New Haven. Yeah. What's interesting about this, and we're going to be showing a lot of pictures, you really took a deep dive into pizza in New Haven. You went all the way back. And I'll, I'll explain this as well, is that this isn't just about New Haven. This is actually about pizza in America and pizza becoming an American uh, food. So in that sense, if we understand that this is a, an American story, it's kind of like our American story. And New Haven should be very proud of its pizza story because we created such an amazing American pizza. So many other pizzas outside of Abate and Modern and Pepe's and Sally's, <clears throat> so many. Um, so let's start diving into the picture, shall we? Yes. So I we think, can tell this story. <laughs> I, I'm, look, it's like if there's a bunch of pizza sitting here, we're eating. Let's just talk. Yeah. Let's okay. talk. So eating with the cover. This is the cover. Um, did you pick it? Did the publisher pick it? So I picked the photos, and uh -huh. the publisher put it together. The publisher, um, America Through Time, uh, through Font Hill, um, they did a great job of making something that seems familiar. It seems like you've already you know, had it in your house. And these are people that we all should know if we don't know. You have Frank Pepe, you've got Sally, you've got Tony Campos Camposano, you've got Frank Zampiello. Those guys you might not know, but they, these are all intrinsic parts of why New Haven is, you know, truly one of the pizza centers of America. And I love its color, and then you did with a sepia yeah. to, to go way back. Of course. That wasn't your idea, was it? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so here we go down memory lane. All yeah. right. Let's, let's check out Pepe's. Tell me about this picture. Where did it come from? And you did a lot of archival work. A yeah, lot. yeah. So I, as, a, as a historian, genealogist, researcher, I have to, I have to delve. So I go into archives, microfilm, um, and we have a lot of great resources in New Haven, thanks to Yale, the uh, Historical Society, even New City of New Haven archives, the library. There's so many archives here. And then you have digital archives. So we can do so much. And this photo that you're looking at, that is actually uh, about 1940, um, somewhat 40, 45, after Frank Pepe opened where we now know as Frank Pepe's uh, main pizzeria. He's so proud. He's standing in front of the pizzeria. He's got two paintings, one of pizza, one of himself. He's got a menu, a beer ad. Um, it, it's like, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's clearly a bigger deal than most restaurants. And it is, at this time, it was the biggest pizzeria in America. Really? Absolutely. I did not know that. Yeah, Pepe's was the biggest, and, and he helped Americanize pizza. What was, why? What, what was the love of pizza for him? What, how, did, how did this all come to be? And it's generational yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. Pepe, Pepe came from a long line of bakers. His brother was a baker. There's no doubt that he learned this from his mom or grandma. But Pepe was a, a passionate uh, immigrant and, and businessman. So his, his knowledge was baking. And he took that knowledge and made it a business. And that's actually what he was recognized for, was being a businessman and also, because of the quality of his pizza, a baker. The, the pizza that he learned in his hometown of Maori, which is near Amalfi, was this traditional flatbread, simple, you know, a baked good that, that he uh, expanded on. And a lot of dishes that we know now, like the white clam pizza was his invention. Um, that was his thing. I mean, that was his contribution to the world. Do you know anything about his trial and error to make it work and be what it is that we know today? Um, I know that Pepe was a very gregarious person. He was extremely friendly. He was extremely like good with people. And it, he didn't need to try. He made what he knew, and he made what he learned. And it worked. And it was great. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah. All right, um, another picture. Ah, one of my inspirations for the book was this actual photo from Terry O'Connor, um, Terry Zampiello O'Connor, and her grandfather, Frank Zampiello, uh, who, who came from um, outside of Naples, he, you know, it was, it was her 
inspiration in his story that helped me say, I got to write about pizza. Did a light bulb go off or you just said, I, I love to write, I'm going to do this. What, what happened? Well, I was leading food tours. I started my food tours and, in and New Terry, Haven. yeah, and Taste of New Haven. And Terry said, you should write about pizza and here's a photo of my grandfather. And we got oh, this great gosh. history. And I said, I never heard of Frank's Abitz. By the word, the word of beats. Abitz is like very New Haven. It's old Nabilitan. It's something that's only New Haven today, you know. So I was looked at this photo. And I said, man, there's a story. Because that you look at the photo and you say, that is a story. So I took her inspiration and I said, I'm going to start cataloging. I'm going to start researching and focusing and categorizing and separating and figuring out what is the story to make pizza an actual you know book or more than a book a lecture a book um, a, a study for class so I teach schools now about it I do lectures at historical societies to uh, anywhere bookstores you name it and now we have a book and I was just talking with people in, uh, in New Hampshire and they were like we would love to see this book here because there's see, something about that. pizza of course yep it's it's a staple of life right I think it's uh, part of us it is part of it's us. It's part of us. All right, speaking of pizzas, we, uh, we have uh, someone. Now, who is that? Okay, my other inspiration. Okay, uh, yeah. two inspirations. <laughs> I have two. It's okay. Uh, so, so this is actually Tony Camposano. And his son, Eddie Camposano, was one of the first people to say, hey, you should do a book on pizza because we have so much in New Haven. And he said, my grandfather, Ignacio, his father, this guy's father, he said he was one of the first. And so I had to do the whole, hey, So Eddie. this was haunting you. You had to do this. Oh, apparently. It was from all angles, from all jobs. That, I mean, Eddie worked at the building department. That was th during my architectural times. I would go and visit him, get a building permit, and Eddie would say, we want to know about my grandfather. He'd say, he was the first guy to have a pizzeria. And I'd say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Until one day I said, I got to talk to you. <laughs> so you and so now we have the book. Yeah. All right. Uh, these gentlemen behind yeah. the counter. So these gentlemen are some of the what I, you might call the uh, elite of the New Haven pizza scene. Frank Pepe on the left, Sally Consiglio on the right, and Frank Pepe's brother, second to left, Tony Consiglio, best friends with Frank Sinatra yes. in the middle, a little little Tony and and Timmy Sigiano. So those guys representing Pepe's, the original Pepe's at the spot about 1930. And that's an amazing photo. That's one of the covers of the book because it, it's pride, it's loyalty, it's, it's the understanding of, of where this came from. It was like, this was a, this is a family business. And not fancy digs. There's one light bulb at the top, if you look. <laughs> They're making big, the pizza. You know, a light bulb's a big deal back then. <laughs> back then, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now this, I did not know that there was a song written about pizza. And, and this is it. Can you, can you pronounce this? In I, Italian? I, I can try. Go it's ahead. not in Italian, though. Come vuo tu. Okay. So um, it's actually Nablitan, which is a different language than Italian. And this song is a love story. It's about a guy who wants to take a girl on a first date to Pepe's when he, when he reopened at the, the, what we now know as Pepe's in 1936. And so he, this guy is saying, hey, come, come to Pepe's. We're going to have a great meal, and no one's going to talk. We're going to have a good pizza, no, but no one's going to gossip. Don't worry. All right, so I printed out on the next page just some of the words. Just the way you like. Rosina, don't make that face. Be happy. Tonight to the pizzeria, I want to take you out. Every promise must be respected, and you stay the night. Don't deny me that I bring you or not. I want to speak to you because I prepared everything at Frank Pepe's. Just the way you like. They have reserved a place for us. Just the way you like. Yeah. Uh, so... Who decided to do this and why was this important? Did they commission the song? What, it's what's the good, background of yeah, this? Yeah, it's a good question. Did they commission it or was it just passionate people in the community? This was a radio announcer, one of the leading Italian radio announcers at the time, um, and it was also a songwriter. So they, they worked together and they said, Frank Pepe, I mean, the guy that we all love who's making pizza, he's opening up a giant restaurant. And they all said, this is a big deal. So they wrote a song about how um, women could get involved in this because it wasn't just about men going out. They wanted women to come out. And they wanted this to be a place for dates, a place for romance, you know. And, and that is that, how this happened. Now that translation, I could not have done it alone. I had help. Um, Anna Sinkavaj uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Scapo. Uh, she helped me, and oh, she's nice. been a huge help in, in my entire Italian version of life. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, you know, so, but this is this is a part of what how the community responded to Pepe. They they weren't just saying you're you're a pizza maker. They weren't just saying you're a guy who loves you know loves what you do. They were saying you're part of our life, and we're going to make this New Haven. This is so, New Haven. So neat. All right, this is not about pizza, but maybe it is. We go to Hulls. Why why did you include that in the book? Oh, beer. Well, beer an entire pizza. chapter. Yeah, you just said it. <laughs> Have you read it? How did you read the book? <laughs> um, so <laughs> let's, I'm going to cough now. Yeah, water time. Mm. So Hulls was, was a place <clears throat> here. So Hulls, Hulls beer was the only beer in Connecticut for, like brewed here for about 20 years. Um, it's one of the oldest breweries, and they, they just got a you know, restart in the name, which is fun. Um, but Hulls uh, was the sort of beer of choice of New Haveners and all of Connecticut from about 1936 or, say, 33 to about 1977 when they burned down. This was actually in an Italian newspaper in New Haven. And they did a whole article appealing to Italians. And this is an early one from the 30s. So they're saying, drink some beer, possibly have some pizza. And then, so it lives. Ernie's Pizzeria. Where is Ernie's? Oh, Ernie's, New Haven's unsung hero. Because I did not know Ernie. Well, uh, well, obviously, I didn't know Ernie. You still but can. <laughs> <laughs> but tell uh, me about this. So Ernie's is in Westville. Uh, it goes back to 1971. His family it goes back to uh, Minore and, and Amalfi in that special region of Italy where so many New Haveners come from. And he's, when he started, he actually came out of other pizzerias. He was helping two other pizzerias. He had worked at Mike's in West Haven. And, and Ernie opened up his own. Uh, and Ernie's is a special place. It was the first pizza I tried, as, at least as I remember, as a baby. Really? Yeah, I was probably like, I could just chew. I had one tooth, and they just put pizza in my mouth. My parents were smart. Because it looks like a diner. Looks like a little diner. It, and a lot of pizzerias were. Yeah. They were really the social places. Sure. So the musicians used to hang out here. I mean, this is where people used to go late into the night. People didn't go to bars as much, say. Mm -hmm. They would go to pizzerias, because you could drink, and you could have pizza. And what's more simple than that? Yeah. Tony's a pizza. Tony's. Tony's a beats. Okay, so Tony's, this is the second Tony's. Ah, and the where first, was the first Tony's? Where Modern is. So believe it or not, Modern, modern Abits, the beginning of Modern, starts with a guy named Tony Tolley. And he started a place on Washington Avenue in the Hill. Then he moved over to where Modern is now, called it Tony's Abits. I know it's complicated. I'm following it. <laughs> Sold that opened another Tony's Abits, which is what you're looking at, and Tony's Abits became modern because it couldn't continue the Tony's name. Now there's a Tony's in East Haven, is that? That's the same one, so that's his like fourth pizzeria, or fifth pizzeria, oh. I mean he opened like six pizzerias. Here's three guys uh, in, a, in our next picture. Hey. Who are? Oh, so you got Nick, Nick Nuzzo, Billy Butts Critella, and Barry Nuzzo. And so left to right, Nick was the owner of Modern. Um, after um, a couple owners, he bought it in 1952. He ran it for about 30 years. And his son was on the right, Barry, uh, V-neck, guns out, you yep. know, the whole thing. But Nick was the, you know, he was the leader of the place. That was his spot. And in the middle, you know, Billy Butts, he still works at Modern. He I'll is still going. the pie guy. And he makes a killer pizza. And they can do it with their eyes closed. I mean, the, the way they toss the dough and all that is amazing. He, he can do it with his, the back of his hands, <laughs> eyes closed, backwards, you know, the whole thing. He, this goes way back, <clears throat> this next photo. Uh, yeah. And it's down one street in New Haven. Yeah. Where, where, are we, where are we? We are on Hill Street, and this is a wonderful photo. Um, this is the, from the collection of Tony Griego, who was a New Haven PD. And, and this photo shows an, a, a, a New Haven that's gone. It was from 1940. You see a pizzeria on the right, a beats on the left. That's Camposano's on the left, and it was called Kiki's uh, Club 88 on the right. It was a pizzeria that had, was a dance club, and both are historic. Both had significance. Both are in the book, and that street was working class. It was uh, Italian. It was Irish. It was French. It was Jewish. It was black. Everybody lived there, and everybody experienced a beats together in a neighborhood like this. The produce market was down the street. The railroad station was down the street. Downtown was two blocks away. Awesome. And everything happened th right there. Right there. This, I love the car parked out. Uh, yes, Misty. Yeah, Misty, Misty is the name. Yes, just Misty, no last name. 
All right. You want to explain that? Well, so I, I can't. <laughs> people, people made a name for their car. So that, that's a great photo. This is from the archives. This is one of those things that I delved into. I found an archive of slides and photos from the New Haven Rede Redevelopment uh, Agency. Wow. And at the city plan office. And they have this unbelievable archive. And this is one of the, the slides that I was able to scan uh -huh. and say, wow, we have color now. We can see the second, uh, you know, sort of generation of Frank Pepe's uh, sign actually out there, a neon sign. You can see the color. You can see what his, his whole sign that's painted on his building is. You can see the color of it. So there's no more mystery. And I think in this way, it brings it to life. Even though this is from about 1961, it brings it to life for sure. us. And the landmark that it is. Yeah. All right, here's a bunch, here's a Motley gang. Who, who are these oh, folks? Oh, these, these guys. Well, um, these are a bunch of bakers and, and bake owners of the company. This is the New Haven Bread Company. Um, this was one of the Italian-owned bread companies. There were about you know, 30 of them well, by 1910. We were the largest Italian city per capita in the country. So bread was a big part of us. And they didn't make pizza at this place, but some of the guys you're looking at crossing their arms, looking like they've had a long day, kind of annoyed that they're being photographed. Some of these guys ended up being some of the pizzioli or pizza makers that we have here in New Haven. So this is a photo from around 1920. Mm. Um, these are the what you might call the baking elite. Interesting. All right, speaking of baking elite, there he is. Ah, uh, Mr. Frank Pepe, Francesco Pepe. Um, well, Mr. Frank Pepe was a, a leader. Um, he was clearly a family man. He was clearly really good to everybody he surrounded himself with and everybody who came into his place. He was funny. He made great pizza. He taught people well. And you know he, you know he, you just see this in his life. He he developed something that everybody wanted, and that was uh, bigger than just pizza, bigger than a restaurant. It was like it's kind of like an aura, and I think he created and his family helped create his daughters, his grandchildren. They created something that we now know as very New Haven. And then to end this pictorial walk down memory lane, we end with Sally's and we end Flo. Yes, so Sally's wife, Flo, wonderful romantic story. They went on like 50 dates before they married and she was uh, the matriarch of Sally's Abitz. She was always there until 2012. She was the person who either sent you home or sent you home with pizza or made you, you know, smile. And it was her love and passion that made Sally's, you know, something in, in my generation and even the generation below me, a place that we all understand as, as iconic. You know, this is New Haven. It's all about family. It's about family. What did you, the book is awesome and I'm, I'm leafing through it. Um, what did you leave out that you wanted to put in it? Or did you get it all in there, do you think? Um, so my, my biggest regret is that I know that there was going to be more archival uh -huh. evidence as, I, as time went on. Somebody would say, oh, I found a photo, or oh, what about my family? And I was never going to be able to include everybody. Um, so I, my only regret is I didn't spend longer writing it. it Seven years is a long time. Um, but I, I have no regrets. I'm so, no. I'm so happy that it's out. Um, I'm very happy with, with the book. I think it's an amazing way for us here in Connecticut as well as us as Americans to say, hey, we got something that came from somewhere else, came here and became ours. Congratulations. Thank Colin you. Kaplan, thank you so much. The book is Pizza in New Haven. Look for it in a bookstore near you. Thank Th you. Thanks, Ann. Spend all night kissing and it falls right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. Call the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of a mind. Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the last ride.